<clears throat> All right. Welcome to Opry Ski Snoga. This is a meant to be a relaxing yoga class to help you either stretch out after a full day of skiing or maybe the next day if you're sore not feeling too great help loosen everything up and get you ready to get back out there we'll start in a seated position whatever that means for you um, whether that's up on your knees here tucking the toes under getting a nice stretch or sitting on the glutes legs can be out in front of you or crossed again whatever works for you I'm gonna start seated on my knees toes tucked under for some decompression breaths to begin take some hang loose fingers pinky to the bottom or thumb to the bottom rib pinky to the top of the pelvis elbows reaching wide as you inhale feel the space you create in the torso exhale bring belly button towards spine throughout this practice I want you to think about puffing up the space in the back of your body so you're filling up the lungs in the back of the body expanding the torso in every direction and then exhale pulling your belly button towards your spine if you're sitting on your toes and it starts to become unbearable you can always lean forward come off the toes sitting onto the tops of the feet wherever you need to go three more of these breaths here inhaling through the nose long slow exhales out the nose shoulders are rolled down away from the ears chin is back back of the head pressing into an imaginary headrest and release that we'll start to roll the neck out here lowering the right ear towards the right shoulder deep inhale and as you exhale lower the chin down towards the chest circling the head towards the left left ear towards left shoulder inhale exhale lowering back to the center and then right ear to right shoulder three more of these following the pace of your own breath inhaling to a shoulder exhaling chin towards chest Continuing to puff up that space in the back of the body. Coming back up towards center. Seated half moon. We're going to inhale the arms up overhead, interlace the fingers, point the palms up towards the sky, relax the shoulders from the ears, and then on your exhale, reach over to the right hand side. Pressing down into that left sit bone here. If you're sitting on your knees like I am, pressing that left sit bone into the heel or into the floor if your uh, legs are crossed out in front of you. Expanding through the left side body, reaching up with this left palm up towards the sky. Coming back towards center. Again, relax the shoulders from the ears and then reach to the other side, pressing that right palm up this time, stretching the right side body, shoulders stay relaxed away from the ears. Inhaling back through center. Exhale, release the hands down to the floor. If you're on your knees, go ahead and sit onto your hip, bring the legs out in front of you. We're going to do a half butterfly, so bringing the feet in towards the groin, pressing the elbows into the thighs, chest is open, long spine here, inhale, grow through the crown of the head, exhale, press the elbows into the thighs, or maybe take your feet, open them up like a book, and exhale, hinge forward, hinging at the hip, we're not rounding the spine, we're hinging forward long inhales grow through the crown of the head exhales pressing down into the earth slowly coming back up to center take the hands to the outside of the leg fold them together like a book stretch that right leg out long bring the left leg in towards the thigh Pressing that right heel 
away from you, bending the toes back towards your nose. Inhale, grow through the crown of the head. Exhale, folding forward. Bring the hand to the foot, the ankle, the calf, wherever you might land. But notice how I square up my shoulders here to be in line with the foot. We don't want to dip down to one side or the other. We want to stay nice and square. And again, we inhale, puff up that space in the back of the body. Exhale, folding forward. Release the foot, ankle, or calf, and slowly start to come up one vertebrae at a time. Switch the legs out. Left leg goes long this time. Right leg comes in. You want the legs straight out in front of you. If it's off to the left, just turn your torso that direction so that your shoulders are again squared up with the foot. Inhale, grow through the crown of the head. Exhale, folding forward, keeping that belly tucked in tight. Nice flat lower back here. You can arch the upper back when you get down there. But we want to keep a nice flat lower back here so we're not hinging at the lower back. Hinge at the hip joint. Deep breaths. Inflating that space in the back of the body. Exhale, belly button towards spine. Release the foot, the ankle, or the calf and slowly start to come up one vertebrae at a time. Awesome. Stretch both legs out in front of you this time. Get any extra flesh out from underneath those sit bones. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, folding forward. Taking your peace fingers, reaching for the big toes. If you can't get there, ankles, calves, shins, perfectly fine. Again, we want a nice flat back as we exhale and fold forward. Take your time here, warming up the hamstrings or loosening, loosening them up, easy for me to say, after a long day of skiing. Again, we're pressing into the heels, bending the toes back towards your nose, growing through the crown of the head. Exhale, folding forward. If you have a hold of the toes, go ahead and release those and slowly come up one vertebrae at a time. Head is the last thing to come up. Sit onto your left hip, bring those legs behind you. Coming into a child's pose here, but we're not gonna make it static, we're gonna make it a dynamic stretch today. So sitting the hips back towards the heels, reaching out with the arms, deep inhale, exhale, let it go. On your next inhale, come up to a cat pose, so arching the spine, exhale, sink back into child's pose. Inhaling up to cat, arching the spine, chucking the chin, Exhale, reach the arms out for child's pose. Three more of those following the pace of your own breath. So as you inhale up to cat, exhale back down into child's pose. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. Now in child's pose, curl the toes under and press the hips up and back for downward facing dog. First downward dog of the day. Maybe walk your dog out here a little bit, bending one knee at a time, getting into your calf, into your Achilles. I'll turn sideways. So we're stretching out the hamstrings. Now we'll move around a little bit in this. We're gonna inhale. And then as you exhale, lower down into cow pose. Knees come down, head comes up. Exhale, press the earth away, downward dog. Inhaling, cow. Belly reaching for the floor, head is up. Exhale, press the earth away. Inhale, back to cow. Imagine you're pulling those hands back towards the knees as you roll that spine. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, cow. Exhale, downward dog. Last one, inhaling for cow. Exhale, downward facing dog. Move forward again. Inhale, right leg goes up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through for low lunge. We're gonna bring the right foot between the hands. Might take you a couple of steps to get up there, no worries. Lower that left knee down to the floor. Untuck the toes so you're pressing that top of your left foot into the floor. And I want you to inhale the torso up. 
pressing into this left hip flexor and sinking into the right hip. You can keep the hands on the floor. You can bring the hands up to the knees if that helps open the chest, rolling the shoulders back. Whatever works best for you here, find what works. Breathe into any discomfort. Two more breaths here. On your next exhale, let's walk back into a half splits or half Hanuman pose. So you're sinking the hips back. I'll turn sideways again. Probably should just turn this way permanently. We're trying to square up the hips here. So you're pressing that left hip forward as you pull the right leg back. Lift the toes up off the floor. Imagine that right pinky toe is reaching for your left ear. Hands can stay on the floor here, right by the knee. Inhale, puffing up that space in the back of the body. Exhale, belly button towards spine. Again, working to square up the hips. You should feel this right in the hamstring, but you want the hips to be square. We don't want to be cockeyed here. Cockeyed. Two more breaths. All right, we're gonna turn this into a dynamic stretch, rocking back and forth between the low lunge and the half Hanuman or half splits here. So as you inhale, coming up into that low lunge, exhale back into the Hanuman. Inhaling up, exhale back. Three more of those following the pace of your own breath. Inhaling into the low lunge, exhaling into the half splits. Two more of those. I'm gonna change my mat position here so you can see me better. Last one. And then we'll inhale back up into the low lunge. Now I recommend either sliding your mat, doubling it up so you have a little more padding on that left knee or if you have a towel, good place for that here. Bring the right hand to the inside of the right foot and then I want you to reach back for your left foot. Grabbing the top of the left foot, inside edge is preferred, but if you can't get there, just grabbing the top or maybe throw a towel around that. And we're starting to stretch into this left quad here. Pulling the heel back towards the glute. Take it nice and easy on the quad here. Your quads did a lot of work skiing or snowboarding. Be gentle to them, let them stretch out. Bring some new blood into those muscles to help with recovery. Now to release this, we don't want to let it go like a slingshot. Because the leg has a tendency to kind of quick jerk back there. So turn on the quad, feel it, your heel pressing towards your foot or towards your glutes and then release the foot and let it slowly lower back down to the floor. Nice. Untuck the mat or come off the towel. We'll sweep that right leg back into a tabletop position. Two cat cows here. Exhale, press the earth away. Inhaling cat. Exhale, cow. Curl the toes under. Press the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Let's try that on the other side. Inhale that right leg up towards the sky. Oh, left leg, I mean. Sorry. Exhale, step it through between the leg hands. Lower the right knee down to the floor, untuck the toes, press the top of the foot into the earth. Inhaling into this low lunge here. Again, if that's too much on your knee, you can always fold this under. Relax into this pose, breathe into that right hip stretch. We're sinking into the left glute here, stretching out that left hamstring right at the connector. Chest is up, maybe come up onto the fingertips or up onto the hands if that helps. Roll the shoulders back, chest is open. Exhale. We're gonna sink back into the half Hanuman here, half splits. So start to sink those hips back as you lift the left foot up off the floor. Belly comes off the thigh. Bring that left pinky toe towards your right ear. Hands creep back towards the knees and square up the hips. So pull, pull that left hip back. Press the right hip forward. 
Every inhale you grow through the crown of the head, exhale fold a little bit closer. Don't sacrifice form for the depth in the stretch. You want to start to feel that into the hamstring and then breathe into that, loosening up those that muscle group. Two more breaths here. Continue to work to square up those hips. And we're gonna make this a dynamic stretch, moving back and forth five times between the lunge, inhaling up, exhale back into the half splits, inhaling up, exhale back. Three more of those, follow the pace of your own breath, inhaling low lunge, exhaling half splits. I lost count, I think this is our last one. Then we'll come back up into that low lunge. Again, let's curl this mat under for a little protection of the knee. Left hand comes to the inside edge of the left foot. Reach the right hand back for your foot, grabbing the inside edge, thumb on the big toe. Oof. If your hamstrings were tight before, you might start to feel them cramp up a little bit here. So when we switch to stretch out the quad, the hamstring should relax. But a lot of times your kind of core is turned on, everything's turned on, and that muscle in the hamstring might cramp. If it does, please let it go, stretch it out. Otherwise, if you're feeling good and you're getting into that right quad, just breathe into it. Two more breaths here. Again, we don't want to slingshot that leg down to the floor. So turn on that quad, pull the ankle towards the glutes and then slowly release the foot. Let it lower down to the floor. Release your mat. Sweep that left leg back. Curl the toes under, press the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Feel free to walk your dog out here. We're gonna spend five breaths in our downward dog. Be kind to your hamstrings. Maybe you wanna bend the knees, sink the chest a little closer to the thighs, and then work to press your heels towards the floor. Whatever modification you need. Remember, everything I say is just a suggestion. This is your practice. Coming out of this pose, we're gonna step our feet up underneath our hips. So slowly start to step your feet up under your hips. Keep that chest to thigh connection that you find yourself in here. So we're stuck right here. We're gonna walk the hands out in front of us, let the head hang heavy, and then shift the weight back into the heels as you start to press the heels into the floor, raising those hamstrings, sorry, the glutes up towards the sky. You'll feel that stretch in the hamstrings. Heads hanging heavy between the arms inching those fingertips further forward as the weight goes further back into the hips, into the heels. Step back. Keeping that chest to thigh connection here protects the lower back. Now you're probably screaming because your quads are on fire from skiing all day. Interlace your fingers, press the hands forward as you sink the hips just a little bit lower for bear pose. Chest is resting on your thighs. Equal weight between the hips and the wrists. Your tug of war is happening here. Release the hands down to the floor. And then we're gonna come up like a rag doll, one vertebrae at a time. I'll turn, face you. Inhaling up into mountain pose. Arms sweep up overhead. And then exhale, hands come down through heart center. Roll your shoulders back. We'll take three breaths here in mountain pose. Lower body should be pretty warmed up by now. Remember to expand the back of the body on these inhales. And we're gonna inhale, arms sweep up overhead. 
Exhale, swan dive down, nice and slow. Inhale, halfway lift, hands come to shins, ears away from the shoulders. Exhale, forward fold. Hands frame the feet, step the feet back into a plank. From here, we'll lower down halfway for Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Two breaths here. And on your next exhale, walk up to the front of your space, coming into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Big bend in the knees as we inhale and rise up, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, swan dive down, nice and slow. Inhale, halfway lift, nice flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Hands frame the feet, step the feet back into a plank. Run through another vinyasa, lowering down halfway chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. On your next exhale, walk up to the front of your space, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Big bend in the knees, we inhale and rise up, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands frame the feet, step the feet back into a plank. From here, we'll move into a downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through for warrior two. We'll lower that left heel down, having heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. And then cartwheel the hands up overhead. Work into your warrior two here. Roll that right knee open. When you look down, you should be able to see your big toe. Hips and shoulders are stacked on top of each other. We'll rotate our palms up towards the sky. And then just rotate the forearms back down. Gaze can be out over your right fingers or straight ahead. Pressing down through the outside edge of that left foot. Deep inhale, fill up the space in the back of the body. Exhale, let it go. This knee needs to stay behind the ankle or above it, never out in front of it. I can't even get there. Protecting that knee joint. Whenever the hips are above the knee, we want the knee behind the ankle. Cartwheel your hands down to the floor. Sweep that right leg back, run through a vinyasa, lowering down halfway, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's turn around. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Right heel comes down, arms sweep up overhead. Find your alignment here. Heel to heel, or heel to arch alignment with the feet. Left knee opening up, peek down, see your big toe. Add the arms, roll those shoulders down the back. Pressing into the outside edge of the right foot. Core's engaged. Deep inhale. Cartwheel your hands down to the floor. Sweep that left leg back. Run through another vinyasa, lowering down halfway, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Finding your balance again. Again, the focus on the left foot is outside edge. So you're pressing into the outside edge of that left foot. That turns on the left glute. That prepares us for our next pose, reverse warrior. Rotate that right palm up. Inhale, arm reaches up for the sky. We don't crunch back into that hip, we're reaching up. On your exhale, relax into the lunge, lower those shoulders away from the ears. Left hand can be down the leg as long as you're not putting weight into the knee, maybe behind the back for half a bind. Cartwheel your hands down to the floor. Sweep that right leg back. Run through your vinyasa or meet us in downward dog, yogi's choice. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Focus is on the outside edge of that right foot. You're pressing in, you see that turn on the inner arch, right glute. 
Inhale, left arm up towards the sky, reverse warrior. Shoulders relax from the ears. Exhale, sink into that lunge. Cartwheel the hands down to the floor. Sweep the leg back. Vinyasa or meet us in downward dog, yogi's choice. You always have the option to skip those down dog, up dogs. And meet us right here in downward dog. Inhale, right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Reverse warrior, inhaling the arm up overhead. Exhale, relaxes the shoulders from the ears, sinks into the lunge. Preparing for triangle pose. Press into the big toe mound, little toe mound, and turn this calf muscle on to straighten out the right leg. Don't hyperextend. Keep those muscles turned on in the calf and pressing into the big toe mound to protect the knee. Right arm comes into warrior two arms. We're gonna reach as far forward as we can, pushing the left hip back. When you go as far as you can, tick tock the arms to six and 12, spiraling the chest open. Remember, keep pressing into the big toe mound and little toe mound. Calf is turned on, knee is protected. Hand can come onto the shin, maybe onto a block if you have one. We're spiraling the chest open here, imagining we're stuck between two panes of glass. To get out of this pose, we wanna go up. So imagine there's a rope tied around your left wrist and someone pulls you up, add the arms, sink into warrior two. Cartwheel your hands down to the floor, right leg sweeps back, run through a vinyasa, or meet us in downward dog. Let's try the left side. Inhale that left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Shoulders relax away from the ears, sink into the lunge. Triangle pose, we're gonna straighten out that left leg by pressing into the big toe mound and little toe mound on the left foot. Reach that left arm up, lower the arms to warrior two. And then we're gonna reach as far forward as we can with the left hand, right hip pushes right, and then tick tock the arms to six and 12 for triangle pose. Again, we're stuck between those two panes of glass here, keeping ourselves super narrow hand on the shin, a block, or maybe just floating in space. Gaze can be straight ahead, down towards the floor, or up towards the right hand, whatever's most comfortable for your neck. Exit strategy again is up. So there's a rope tied around my right wrist this time and someone pulls me up, add the arms to warrior two, sink into that lunge. Nice. Cartwheel your hands down to the floor. Sweep that left leg back. Let's run through a vinyasa here, lowering down halfway. Chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome. Doing great. Keep breathing. Deep inhales, puffing up the chest. All right, one more set of these. Inhale, right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, relax those shoulders from the ears, sink into the lunge. Pressing into the right leg for triangle again. Arms come to parallel with the floor. Reach as far forward as you can. Tick tock the arms to six and 12. From here, we're gonna transition into pyramid pose. Bring the left hand down to the floor and step the left foot into one stride's length distance. The right foot is gonna remain straight ahead. The left foot is at about a 40 degree angle. And then we're gonna to work to square up the hips and fold over that right leg. So the right hip's pulling back, left hip working forward, forehead reaching for shin, nose reaching for knee. Inhale, puff back of the body. Exhale, belly button towards spine. You might feel a little twinge here in the hamstring. We're getting into it here. It should be pretty significantly warmed up by now. If it's too much, you can come up halfway here. Maybe put your hands on a block 
and still the main purpose is to square up those hips and get into that right hamstring so we want the hips nice and square and flat here you can stay right here or you can be folded over if you're right here it's no worse it's just where your body's at today sometimes hand on the shin or again hand on a block is a good good alternate here Now press into the right foot, bring your hands together, and then inhale them up. Stay nice and strong in that right leg as you bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, step that left forward, and then swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Hands frame the feet, step the feet back into a plank, and run through a vinyasa here, lowering down halfway, chaturanga, inhale. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, let's try that on the left side. Inhale, left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, step it through, warrior two. Opening up the hips. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, relaxes the shoulders from the ears. Coming into triangle, straighten out that left leg. Remember, keep that calf muscle turned on and protect the knee. Arms coming to parallel, reaching forward, tick tock to six and 12. Coming into pyramid pose, bring that right arm down to the floor, step the right foot into one stride's length. Left foot pointing forward, right foot is at an angle again. And then let's square up those hips. So press that left hip back, pull the right hip forward. Inhale, and as you exhale, fold over the left leg. Again, modifications, hand to shin, nice flat back, working on the hips. Hands on a block, or hands on the floor. Trying to bring forehead closer to shin, nose closer to the knee. Inhale, puffs up the space in the back of the body. Exhale, belly button towards spine. Two more breaths. Bring the hands in front of you, interlace the fingers, and then press into that left foot as you inhale the arms up overhead. Staying strong in that left leg the whole time. Exhale, release the hands, step the foot forward. Mountain pose. Nice, all right, let's shake it off here. Shake it all out. Whew. Do a few balance poses here, and then we'll get down onto the floor. Stretch everything out and take a nice long Shavasana. I think I can turn this back forward again. All right, from mountain pose, we're pressing into the earth. Outside edges of the feet are parallel. That creates a little bit of internal rotation of the thighs, squeezing those glutes and everything. We'll bring the hands into measuring sticks again. Hang loose fingers, pinky to the top of the hips, thumb to that bottom rib. Shoulders reaching out wide. Inhale. Exhale. Three more breaths here. Maybe dim the eyes. Elbows reaching out wide. Chin is back, not down, not tucked, but back so that the weight goes into the front of the neck to hold the head up as opposed to the back of the neck. Release the hands down to the floor. Moving into standing head to knee, this is a good hamstring stretch here. Lots of modifications, I'm gonna build you up. So wherever you feel comfortable, stay there. If you wanna keep going, follow along. Let's bring the weight into the left leg. Bend the right knee to 90 degrees. This is the pose right here. If you want, you can bring your hands onto imaginary tables. Your brain doesn't know they're not there to help with balance. Shoulders roll back. You can stay right here. If you'd like, you can interlace the fingers beneath the hamstring and press the heel in front of you. Shoulders are back, chest is open. Continue to breathe here. Or 
you can interlace the fingers, keeping the knee where it is, so you're folding forward. Interlace the fingers beneath the pad of the foot, and then press that heel away, lowering the head towards the knee. I'm gonna stay right here. This is where I'm at today. Shoulders are rolled back. Two more breaths wherever you are in the pose. If you took the full expression, release the foot and slowly start to come back up. Bending the knee, release the leg. Hands are back to our table. Exhale, lower that leg down to the floor. Shake it out. Bring the weight into the right leg this time for standing head to knee. Hands come onto our imaginary tables. Back up in case I'm not in the frame here. Bring that left knee up to 90 degrees. You can stay right here. Find something to lock your gaze on that isn't moving. If you took the variation with the hand beneath the hamstring, press that heel away, roll the shoulders down the back, pressing the heel away, toes back towards your nose. Or again, hand to knee, head to knee. Interlace the fingers beneath the pad of the foot, and then exhale, press the heel away, lowering the forehead towards the shin. Two more breaths wherever you're at in the pose. If you took the full expression, release the foot, Slowly start to come back up, bending the knee to 90 degrees, release the leg, hands come to the tables. Exhale, lower it down to the floor. Ooh, shake it out again. We'll do tree. Weight comes into the left leg, bend the right knee, open it to the right. Hands come together at heart center. Foot is a kickstand right next to the ankle. This is tree pose. If you'd like, you can bring the foot up to the ankle, maybe onto the calf, or up above the knee, into the thigh, Pressing the heel into the thigh, thigh right back into the heel. Never into the knee. The knee goes forward and backwards. Well, it doesn't go left and right. Hands are at heart center. Find your focal point. Pressing the hips forward, knee reaching to the right. Release the hands and grow your branches. Arms reaching up overhead. Relax those shoulders from the ears. Core is engaged here. We're puffing up the space in the back of the body. Two more breaths. To come out of this pose, bring the knee towards midline, hands come together, lower the hands down, interlace the fingers around the shin. Give yourself a little hug here. Let's rotate this ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. And then release the foot down to the floor. Transferring the weight into the right leg. Bend the left knee, open it to the left. Hands come together at heart center. Chest is open, shoulders are back. This is the pose right here. You can move the foot off the ground onto the ankle, maybe onto the calf, or up above the knee, pressing that thigh right into your heel. Heel right back into the thigh. Glutes are turned on, hips are pressing forward, left knee reaching out to the left. Start to grow our branches here. Inhaling, exhale, relax those shoulders from the ears. If you need an additional challenge, start to dim the eyes a little bit. Balancing without visual cues is a practice in breathing. Oh, couldn't do it. That's all right. If you fall out, just come right back in. Good thing about doing this at home, no one can see you fall. Except maybe your cat. <laughs> Baxter. Two more breaths. Again, knee comes towards midline, hands come together, interlace your fingers around the shin, pull that shin in towards your chest, roll the ankle a couple of times. Lower the foot down to the floor. Toe heel your feet out to the width of your mat. Heels will stay on, toes will be off, they're at a 45 degree angle here. You're gonna inhale the arm up overhead for five yogi squats here. Exhale, lowering down, knees track out over toes. And then press into the earth with the three points of contact on each foot. Big toe mound, little toe mound, and heel. Feel how strong your legs are as you inhale and rise up. Exhale, lower down. 
Inhaling up. Exhale down for three. Inhaling up. Exhale down four. Inhaling up. Now on this last one, we're going to go all the way down to the floor without the use of our hands. So slowly start to lower down. Try not to plop. Awesome. Whew. All right. Stretch those legs out in front of you. Maybe slap your mat with your hamstrings. You did good work today. Let's stretch everything out and then we'll have a nice long Shavasana. Starting with half Lord of the Fish. I'll turn a little bit on an angle here so you can see me. We're gonna bend this, bend the left leg, step it over the right, okay? Left hand comes behind the body, fingertips are pointing away. Inhale the right arm up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, bring the right elbow to the outside edge of the left knee and twist. Now as you twist, you're inhaling and growing through the spine. Exhale, compress your core to squeeze and turn a little bit further. Eventually your gaze starts to make its way over the left shoulder. The right foot is active. It's not just sitting there hanging out. You're pressing into the heel, bending the toes back towards your nose, trying to extend that right leg as long as you can. Shoulders aren't pinching the ears, right? We're relaxing them and growing through the crown of the head. Nice long spine here. One more deep inhale. Exhale, release for a quick counter pose. Left elbow comes to the inside edge of the left knee and twist the other side for one breath. Exhale, let it go. Slap the hamstrings on the grammat again and we'll try the other side this time. So we'll bend the right knee, step the right foot over the left. Right hand comes behind the body, as close to the glutes as you can get it without pinching your shoulder up towards your ear. Fingertips are pointing away. Inhale that left arm up towards the sky. And then exhale and twist. Left elbow to the outside edge of the right knee. Inhale, grow. Exhale, twist, compressing the core to twist a little bit further. Gaze starts to make its way over the right shoulder. Remember that left foot is active. It's pressing the toes back towards the nose, pushing into the heel. Every inhale you grow through the crown of the head. Every exhale you fold or twist a little, a little bit further. One more inhale, exhale, counter pose, right elbow to the inside edge of the right knee and twist. Exhale, let that go. All right, let's rock onto our back here just a few times. So bring the heels in towards the glutes. Give yourself a bear hug here and we're gonna rock back and forth. Just shoulder blades to heels, realigning the spine here a little. And then we'll end up flat on our backs. Sure with them. I'll just lay flat on my back here. Bend the right knee in towards your chest. Interlace your fingers around the shin and pull the knee back towards the armpit. Avoiding the rib cage, start to roll the ankle clockwise, counterclockwise. Let something go here, maybe unclench the jaw. Pick the tongue off the roof of the mouth. Release the right leg. Inhale that right leg up towards the sky. And on your exhale, lower it down to the floor. When the right heel touches, bend the left knee in towards your chest. Interlace your fingers, pulling that left knee back towards the armpit, avoiding the rib cage here. And we'll roll that ankle clockwise, counterclockwise. Releasing the left leg, inhale the left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, lower it down to the floor. When the left heel touches, bend both knees into the chest. Give yourself a bear hug here. Maybe rocking back and forth, trying to bring that whole spine onto the floor. And 
then we'll release the feet down to the floor for figure four stretch. Feet, knees are bent, feet are coming towards the glutes. We'll take the right ankle, place it on top of the left knee. Right hand goes through that hole you created, interlacing your fingers around the hamstring or the shin, and pull that left knee back towards your armpit here. You should start to feel this in the right hip. Take a deep inhale into your right hip. Exhale, press the right thigh away with the elbow, get a little extra juice out of that hip. This doesn't have to stay static. You can rock back and forth here, kind of wiggle around. Find what works for you in this pose. Keeping the head on the floor, a slight tuck of the chin will get some extra length out of the back of the neck. Two more breaths here. Release the left leg down to the floor. Cross the right leg completely over the left. And we have two options here for shoelace pose. We're gonna bend the knees in towards the chest, grabbing the tops of the feet and trying to pull them down to the floor. If you start to feel any pain in the knees, come off of that and just give yourself a big bear hug. Kind of does the same thing. It's an outer hip stretch here that we're trying to work into. Otherwise, if you have the tops of the feet, again, we're working towards pulling them down towards the floor. Chin tucked a little bit just to get a nice long spine. I'm starting to feel that in my knees so I can come off of it just a little bit. You don't need to overdo it here. Release the feet, and then everyone give yourself a bear hug here. Squeeze those knees in towards the chest. Exhale, lower down. Keep the legs crossed, or you can stack the knees next to each other for our supine twist. We're gonna scoot the hips to the right just a few inches. Lower the knees down to the left, so now the hips are stacked on top of each other. Inhale, right arm up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, let the right arm fall to the floor. Your head starts to follow it, gaze looking over towards your right hand. Inhale. Exhale, relax into the twist. Again, let something go here. Unclench the jaw. Take your tongue off the roof of the mouth. If you have an idea floating around your head, just let it go. Inhale the legs back up through center, uncross the legs, bend the knees in towards the chest for happy baby. Elbows to the insides of the knees, hands to the outsides of the feet. Trying to bring that whole spine onto the floor, stacking the ankles over the knees, maybe rocking back and forth here, a little massage for the spine. Keeping the knees bent, we'll release the feet to the floor. Figure four stretch on the other side this time. Left ankle comes to the top of the right knee. Left hand goes through that hole you just created, interlacing your fingers around the hamstring or the shin, and then pull the right knee back towards your armpit. Deep inhale into this left hip here. Exhale, maybe press the thigh away with the left elbow. Slight tuck of the chin, we'll get some extra length out of the back of the neck. Nice long spine. that right foot down to the floor, cross the left leg completely over the right, 
her shoelace pose on this side. Bend the knees in towards the chest, grabbing the tops of the feet. Pull the feet down towards the floor. Again, if this is too much on the knees, we don't want to move into pain. You can breathe through discomfort, but don't move into pain. If it is, give yourself a bear hug here. Trying to stretch into these outer hips, piriformis. All those muscles that control the inward and outward directions of the legs. Release the feet, bend the knees in towards your chest. Everyone give yourself a bear hug here. And then release the legs, keeping the legs crossed or again, you can stack the knees next to each other. We'll scoot the hips to the left a few inches and then lower the knees to the right. Inhale, left arm reaches up for the sky. As you exhale, let it fall to the floor. Gaze follows your hands. Inhale, exhale, just relax into the twist. We're slowing everything down, maybe dim the eyes, bring everything inside as we prepare our body for Shavasana. Slowly start to inhale the legs back up to center, uncross the legs, bend the knees in towards the chest. Since I have twin babies napping inside, hopefully, I do two happy babies at the end of every practice. Elbows to the insides of the knees, hands to the outsides of the feet. Maybe start to rock back and forth here, stacking the ankles over the knees, pulling the knees down towards the armpits, whole spine on the floor. And then we'll release the feet down to the floor, preparing for Shavasana. Slowly laying back onto the floor. Let the feet fall open as they may. Hands are away from the sides of the body. Trying to bring all 10 fingernails onto the floor, palms facing up. Roll your shoulders up and then back down, creating a nice little platform for the heart. Rock your head from side to side. Try to find a comfortable resting position for your head. And then just relax into the earth. Looks like it's about to rain. So I think I'm gonna have to head inside. This is where I will leave you today. I invite you to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you can. Play some soft music and just relax into the earth. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Give yourself some A for joining this video today and practicing most important part of yoga is showing up. Appreciate your hard work and effort. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.